Independence Day is a day of celebration across the United States, and in the year 1900, July 4th in Tacoma was no different. The city was planning a large event that had drawn the attention of people from all around the area. Local organizations were involved, political officials were in town, and there was a parade scheduled that even featured the U.S. Navy. Unfortunately, the day would turn to tragedy before it would even start as the biggest trolley disaster in U.S. history unfolded, leaving dozens dead, scores more injured, and a city in mourning. We're looking at Tacoma Power Company's coach number 213. This is the last of the trolley cars that operated in Tacoma. And this one's slightly smaller than coach number 116, which was the one that crashed. This trolley here has the capacity to hold about 50 people. Coach number 116 had the capacity to hold around 60 people. And as near as I can tell, with a guesstimate of being 144 plus or minus one or two, that's how many people had crammed themselves into the coach. One person had told the coroner's jury during the investigation into the accident that there were so many people crammed inside the trolley car that they couldn't reach their hand inside their own pocket. That gives you some idea of just how many people were inside that trolley car at the time in which it crashed. The trolley had left from downtown Tacoma and it made its way southward and it went all the way down to Parkland and then turned around at Spanaway Lake. On the return trip, it began picking up customers, and many customers at that. By the time it got to Edison, which is a neighborhood around 72nd and South Tacoma Way, that car was already crammed to capacity. The only problem is, is that the car that was traveling ahead of it had broken down because it had been overloaded. Also take into consideration that there was a streetcar that had come in from Stillicum, so now you have all those people that want to go to the celebration, plus you have all the people that were trying to get there early on the car that had broken down, and you had all those people that were coming in from Stillicum all arriving at the same place at the same time, and there's only one car that they can get on. And so they began to stuff that thing as full as they possibly could. The trolley could manage this many people on level ground, but after a successful safety check of the brakes, it began to descend the grade at Delin Street. As the trolley was making its way down the grade, it was constantly picking up speed. And when it got down to C Street, it was supposed to make a sharp left-hand curve. That left-hand curve was only designed for trolley traffic at approximately 10 miles per hour. By the time the trolley got to the bottom of the hill, it was doing closer to 55 to 60 miles an hour. Unfortunately for the victims of the trolley disaster, the trolley rotated over, did a barrel roll, and landed upside down in the ravine behind me. Even though the crash happened at an inopportune moment, it happened at an opportune location. Many people were marshalling for the grand parade that was going to take place later that morning. About two blocks away were 30 Tacoma police officers who didn't need to be called to the scene. They could hear the crash. And even though they were wearing their finest coats, they ran to the scene of the accident and immediately started administering aid to those victims. And there were victims everywhere you could look because as that car was running out of control, people began systematically hopping off the car and they said that it looked like just a fan of humanity spread out all over Delin Street and see at that particular point where the accident took place. 37 people were killed instantly. Another seven more people would linger on for days, hours, and weeks. About 75 people were administered to the two hospitals that we had here in Tacoma at the time. We had the Fanny Paddock Hospital, which is now Tacoma General, and St. Joseph's. One interesting benefit of the tragedy was the use of the x-ray machine at St. Joseph's Hospital. It was the first of its kind in Washington State. The machine was not in common use at the time because many viewed it with suspicion as a device of the devil because it could see inside of a person. 
In the aftermath of the accident was the investigation, which took into account the damp weather, the tracks, the capacity of the trolley, the trestle, as well as the record of the veteran motorman, Frank Boehm, a recent transplant from Cincinnati who was on his first solo run in Tacoma. Unfortunately, there was no mechanism to share that information with other agencies. That wouldn't happen until after the Wellington disaster of 1910, which took place near Stevens Pass. With that disaster, the state took a more active role in making sure that these reports were filed and shared properly. Mass transit safety is something that's taken for granted today, but unfortunately, it takes knowledge learned from tragedies like this to build the precautions that enable us to travel safely today. Support for Historic Washington, provided by the Washington Hospitality Association and by Weatherly Inn, senior living where it's home and your family.